And you were there in Dallas at the Elevate event organized by Uber. Tell us about how it felt. What was their excitement in the room? So it was a really a great, great event. Um, a lot of people, and what uh, stri strikes me the most was the, uh, the, the energy was there, that was, was there. And you could really think that um, I, something was happening. It was the beginning of a new era of uh, air transportation. Um, and a lot of hurdles has been, have been uh, addressed, uh, discussed, and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, what we're going to see, uh, uh, what we discuss, uh, we're going to see that in, in, the, in the coming years uh, very, very soon. Uber said it would like to see flying vehicles being demoed in 2020. Is this a reality? How quickly will we actually start to see Uber using these sorts of flying vehicles as taxis? So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a reality. It's going to happen much quicker than uh, what we thought even uh, a year ago uh, because uh, there's a couple of uh, elements that, uh, that are ready now. Um, we look at the battery. The battery, they have the right density, the right energy storage. So uh, battery are OK. The supercharger, they are ready too. So um, for a small uh, and, and short haul, you're going to be able to re refuel or recharge your vehicle in less than five minutes. Um, the, the, the platform or the, the architecture of this vehicle have, have been defined. And there's some kind of consensus between a, a mix of an helicopter and, um, and a plane. And uh, what did Aurora space system um, in terms of a demonstrator was quite uh, interesting and, and quite feasible. So what I really think is that we're going to see the, these first um, flying cars, or at least new uh, mode of transportation, uh, doing their, their first um, test flight by, by next year. That, that's for sure. So test flights by next year, maybe even being used as soon as 2020 as the idea goes. What's the market like? Where is the demand at, as it currently stands? So uh, what the, the, the new thing about um, you know, that, that business is that uh, as Uber is pushing it, Uber is, is creating the right uh, business case for that. In, in the past, all the, uh, the different other platform and vehicle that we've seen are more uh, for leisure uh, type of, um, of, of application. The and super rich. Yeah, super rich, and which is still a niche market, and mm -hmm. which means niche market is not, not well suited for VCs. Doesn't mean that they're not great product, product but uh, uh, less for VCs, more for you know passionate business angels or, or sovereign fund that want to build their own industry. Um, what we've seen is that. Um, yeah, it, it's really a question of, of timing, and I think the timing is right. Uh, Uber looks at, at their business, um, and they, they operate in more than 500 cities. Um, and they estimate, uh, they think that uh, the number of these type of vehicles per city uh, is between 500 to 1,000. And so when you do the math, um, when you uh, spread that over, over 10 to 15 years, yeah, there's a, there's a real market. That's a, a couple of billion dollars market, at least for the, 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 the platform manufacturer. And yeah. um, I think we're going to see another uh, one or two unicorn emerging out of the aerospace segment. You say Uber works in 500 cities, but I came here from Berlin and it doesn't work all that pleasantly in 500 cities. Sometimes they've had to work with the regulators and sometimes it's the taxis that we use Uber and, and certainly not individual private drivers. What are the regulatory hurdles looking like for Uber to use flying cars or anyone indeed? So there's two things about that, that new business. Yeah, that new business, they're not going to fight against the, reg, the, the, the legacy taxi uh, driver and industry and lobby um, because they're going to bring uh, more uh, electric uh, vehicle flying over the air. So you're going to uh, emit less CO2. You're going to reduce traffic uh, on, the, on the ground as you're going to remove some of, uh, uh, of it through the air. So you're going to really add value um, to the, exp of the, the traffic or the, the uh, the commuting experience to each, each of these cities. Uh, maybe Berlin or even Paris won't be the, the first adopters, that for sure. But when you look at cities like, uh, so they talked about uh, Dallas and, and, and Dubai, but when you look at cities like Jakarta or even Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing or Sao Paulo, this huge mega city with um, terrible traffic, um, yeah, th th I'm sure they're going to be the, the early adopters and they're going to push even the regulators um, to evolve the, either the certification process and all these yeah. uh, necessary to make that happen quickly. So at Starbust Accelerator, what are you putting your money into at the moment? Who are going to be these unicorns that you say are born out of this? 
So uh, we are about to release our report uh, on, on these new flying vehicles. Uh, uh, we have listed five, uh, sorry, seven different categories. Um, uh, Kitty Hawk uh, is, is in one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so out of these seven, pages. yeah, there, there's uh, probably one that's going to emerge, which is the we call the fixed wing um, electrical vertical takeoff and landing um, category. And in that in that category, there's a, a couple of players. Um, uh, Lilium out of Germ Germany is one of them. Um, Joby in the US. Aurora I, I talked about. Um, Airbus as a big player is, is entering into the market and, and there's still a, a few that uh, have not uh, you know, emerged but I know that they're working in, in more uh, stealth mode.